everyone, it's Danny. Alrighty, today I'm gonna take you along for the repotting of my beautiful orchid Stanhopia marizana. This is the first time I repot this type of orchid. I'm not sure what to expect, but I do know that this orchid should not sit in a pot, in a solid pot. Um, the habit of this orchid is to produce flower spikes through the pot and actually um, pull them out of the pot through the bottom. And for this reason, solid pots are not good with Stanhopia orchids, so I will use a basket, which I really, really like. Alrighty, so let's do our usual routine. Let us um, try to remove the orchid from the pot. Alrighty. So I really do not see any flower spikes. Uh, I wasn't expecting to find anything, but as you can see, it is potted in sphagnum moss. I do intend to use sphagnum moss as well. The roots, uh, I do see some tips, but um, they don't look to be in perfect condition really. So I'm just going to start to remove this old sphagnum moss. So I will be back when I remove the sphagnum moss um, as best as I can to show you the root system. Okay, so my orchid is pretty much cleaned up. It has quite a decent root system. I do see quite a lot of new growth, which is nice, but the problem with this orchid is that it has a rotting pseudobulb. You can already see it here. And I'll give you a close-up. Look how mushy this is. Now, I was thinking to let this be for a little while to feed this growth, but I think it's kind of risky to do that. Now, these types of orchids, orchids that have pseudobulbs in general, um, have a little trick up their sleeves. If something happens to the mother pseudobulb and it gets chopped off, it's pretty okay. As long as you leave the base intact, which is attached to the other pseudobulb through the rhizome the back bulbs can actually feed the new growth of this pseudobulb even if this pseudobulb disappears. So I will attempt to remove the pseudobulb without actually splitting up the new growth from the other pseudobulbs. It's gonna be slightly tricky. I'll try to twist it off. If that doesn't work, I'll go in with a knife and try to make a clean cut, sterilize it extremely, extremely well. Try to put some cinnamon in there as well. I don't know, but I'll take you along. Hopefully I succeed. So first, I'll try to twist it off. I'm not sure if it's gonna work. I might need goggles because I don't want to be splashed with its juices. So if twisting doesn't work because this guy is really in a bad shape, I'll cut it. You know what? I don't think I want to twist this. It's, um, it's tricky to twist it. I will cut it. So I have a cutter here. It is sterilized, never been used with any other orchid, actually. So let's try to cut uh, this pseudobulb. Give a clean cut. There's really no point in me keeping uh, this pseudobulb because it's going rotten and mushy. Oh, there you go. This is a beautiful, beautiful cut. Alrighty. Oh my God. Okay, so you might see, oh, it's green, you massacred the plant. No, look at this. It's not supposed to do that. It is not supposed to be mushy in any way. It is supposed to be stiff, and this is anything but stiff. And also look at the color. So uh, this is not good. Even though there is still a good leaf, this little bulb would have been completely gone in about two weeks. It can also spread the disease. I don't want to do that. So yeah, look at this, not a good sign. I will discard the pseudobulb. Now I want to leave the base of the pseudobulb on like this because it ensures the connection between the back bulbs and the new pseudobulb. What I'm gonna do now is go and spray everything with hydrogen peroxide 3% thoroughly, especially this part right here. And I'll come back when I'm done. Okay, so I sprayed my orchid with hydrogen peroxide, all the root system, and also this big ugly wound right here. So what I want to do now, let's put this here, is to actually dry it off a little bit. After the initial reaction, all you will have left from the hydrogen peroxide is water and oxygen. So whatever is left here is just water. It will not act anymore. So I want to dry it just a little bit. Use clean napkins, okay? And then we're gonna try to heal this wound faster, make it uh, dry faster, and also maybe give it a little antifungal. 
For this, I like to use cinnamon powder. Now, cinnamon powder dries very, very well, so you need to be careful how you apply this. Don't apply it everywhere, don't apply it on the roots, because it will end badly. So I'm not really sure how to do this, but I will try to protect the root system just like this and only apply the cinnamon powder on this huge wound. Because it is still moist, the cinnamon powder will adhere pretty, pretty fast. So again, I'm really, really careful how I apply the cinnamon powder. If it starts to go everywhere, just blow a little bit and it will go away but it will stay on the moist surface where I cut the pseudobulb. So what I did now is absolutely covered the wound with cinnamon powder. Alrighty, before you pot the orchid, try to see if you have any dead roots on your orchid. I actually don't have too many, so I didn't hassle too much, but if you do have dead roots, they should be mushy, they should not be stiff. If you pull on them, they should come right off and leave a string behind. Again, I don't seem to have any dead roots, which is nice for the circuit. Uh, but if you have dead roots, remove them with a sterilized scissors and then you can repot the orchid. So as I was saying, I will use a basket for this orchid and I will use pure sphagnum moss because this basket is just so airy. If I would use something else, it will dry out very, very fast and this orchid kind of likes to stay moist. So for this reason, I will use pure sphagnum moss. So I placed a layer of sphagnum moss on the bottom of my basket. I am working with dry sphagnum moss. At this point, I don't want to water this area anymore. I will try to keep it um, dry so it calluses faster. And for this reason, I will show you how I intend to water this orchid. But for now, I just placed a layer of sphagnum moss on the bottom because the orchid has quite a lot of roots. I'll try to make a sort of a ball right in the roots. So I will put some sphagnum moss in between the roots so that I don't have a very, very big um, air pocket. You don't have to go mental about this, but just a few strains of sphagnum moss, it's okay to place in the middle just to make sure that you have something holding water in the middle as well. Not too much. And now I'm gonna arrange this orchid in this basket. So the pattern of growth of my orchid is in this direction. It might try to put some new growth from the other pseudobulbs as well. This is a sort of a last resort if something happens to this growth, but I'm not sure what's gonna happen. So I'll try to center it somehow. And then it's just a matter of adding sphagnum moss in between the roots. Now I notice with this orchid that the roots are very flexible and actually sphagnum moss is not so rough. So you can actually press a little bit on the sphagnum moss to go down. I really don't think I'm snapping the roots. As I said, they're pretty flexible. So I'll try to make the sphagnum moss go down by pressing gently on it. Don't have to be rough, but you can actually press gently. I've actually encountered orchids with far less flexible roots and that was a hassle, but this one is a joy to pot. Okay, so let's say you have some air pockets down below here. The thing you can do is get a tweezers, get your strain of sphagnum moss, and actually try to pull it or push it in through the eyes of the basket. And this way, you don't really have to press on the top and damage the roots. Whatever sounds you hear is the sphagnum moss. This is dry sphagnum moss, and this is how it sounds like. It's not the roots being snapped. Okay, so my orchid is done. I've uh, placed all the sphagnum moss that I could, and because I used dry sphagnum moss, the area remained dry, even if a few strains of sphagnum moss touched this area. The cinnamon stayed in place, and I didn't overwet the area more than I should have. Now, for this reason, because this orchid has this really ugly wound here, the way I'm gonna water it is gonna be slightly different. Now, I'm gonna get myself a bowl with water, and I'm gonna place this basket inside this water just like this and I'm gonna leave it here for a few minutes to let the sphagnum moss soak in water. I'm not sure how fast it will go but most probably you can already see it. The sphagnum moss is so water absorbent that even if you have water on the bottom the sphagnum moss will absorb it and direct it to the top as well. So like this I will not over wet the area that I just sterilized I'll water the orchid, but overall it will be safer and I will let this heal up. So I would do this for about two weeks or so just to make sure the area is completely dried off. 
Of course, you can take a look at it and judge for yourself if the area is completely sealed and completely dry before I actually start watering otherwise. So righty, this was the repotting of the Stanhopia. Hopefully you found it useful. We dealt with a rotting pseudobulb as well. So if you have trouble, this is how I would go about it actually. I think this is the safest method that I can find. So I'll keep you up to date with the evolution of this orchid. If you'd like to see more videos from me, don't forget to subscribe. You can leave me comments, suggestions and questions in the comment section below. Also visit orchidnature.com for care sheets or identification sheets and all the goodies. And also you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram. I'll see you next time. Thank you for joining. Bye!